So the Brickyard Trail and the town of Brighton to the first art exhibit um, that has been held in this house. And uh, some ideas for the art exhibit started before the pandemic. There, Bill Maley uh, got together a group of people to try to decide how to use this house. We had a lot of fabulous ideas about programs and art exhibits. And the last meeting we had was in February of 2020 with a nice long list. And then March happened and then, you know, what happened after that. So the Friends of the Brickyard Trail, which is a small but mighty um, group that uh, supports the Brickyard Trail, um, and we have some various programs. Sometimes they're just walks on the trail and uh, work with the library and everything else. But we had this idea that we do an art exhibit that would celebrate the Brickyard Trail. So started to work with the town and with Mary Jo Lampier, um, the town historian, and try to figure out how we could make this happen. And it took a lot of, um, Mm, energy to try to figure out how to collect up the art and how to uh, how to display it and how to advertise it and how, and how to do all these things. But I think this first time that we've done this has been uh, a resounding success. And um, I want to thank first of all all the artists because because we and there may be some artists here who said I didn't know and I would like to have participated. Well. We were trying to keep this a little bit low key because we didn't know what we were doing. Um, exactly. <laughs> and we were gonna set some precedents. So what we decided was just to invite people that we knew who had done art and just see how many pieces. We had no idea how many pieces would really fit in here on the hanging systems that they had. Have, haven't used the hanging systems before. So um, that's what we did. We ended up with 11 artists who have done work that's on the wall with a couple more who contributed including bill who contributed some of their video or from their um, photographs that are on the video booth and the people who the artists have are um angelique armstrong who did some really some ones in that way mark who overachiever mark who oh, yes. um <laughs> When we asked for three, he said, I think I have six. No, maybe I have seven. Um, <laughs> a lot of oil. And I would hear every day, he said, "There, I've been to the studio, but the paint isn't dry yet, and I can't put more on. And he was going on and on. So it was fun. Uh, and then he recruited his buddy, David Delaney, who his name is David Delaney, but everybody calls him Delaney, apparently. So when, that's how he did it. He did some. My mother called him David. <laughs> Only the she did. Um, and so he contributed some um, lovely acrylics in that room over there. And then me, I did photographs. Uh, Sandy Frankel did some photographs also. Michael Hager did those beautiful leaves that are very artsy um, in our car. From plus, he did a whole bunch of he did a whole bunch of very um, uh, helpful things with printing the labels that you see there. Mm -hmm. And just on the last minute, we'd say, we need one more thing, and he would take care of that. Maureen Service did this amazing shadow box that's in there um, with her mornings with Joey. She walks with her lovely white dog very early, like 5 in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, and she did some just beautiful, very unique work. Bernie. Around the, around the corner who wrote a poem and did a and did a photograph with that um amy stratton smith did some lovely paintings in there joan wheatman did some and michael Hager just came. ah excellent michael and joan wheatman who is also here so there she is who is out there with her camera um did some things too uh on the video Jeannie verhals too if you've ever walked on the trail she's often with her husband and she's got a great big camera with a long lens and she's keeping track of all the birds she's seeing and she's got her binoculars and her husband is sort of sauntering along just with binoculars and saying, Jeannie, did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> so she contributed photographs of birds that are on the video loop. We couldn't really have done this without the help of the Friends of the Brickyard Trail. We are a small group, but Mark, Fran, and me <laughs> and a couple of other people have helped support this. And then the town of Brighton, which was really helpful, um, allocating a lot of time 
with particularly with Becky Cotter helping us out a great deal and the, the wonderful parks guys who, um, especially Adam, who is tall and can reach everything and who's out here <laughs> shoveling this morning, fixing the lights that were flickering, doing all these different things. They were great. Um, and let's see, I got all those people, all from the parks people. And then Mary Jo from the town, the town historian, who had a lot to say about the house. And if you have any questions about the house, she has a library in her head and she can tell you everything that you want to know. And a special thanks with for Anya um, Mihash, where are you, you Anya? Hiding. You're hiding. <laughs> so I met Anya on the trail. She has this lovely um, gray poodle, big poodle. She walks every day, and she walks fast, you know. But one time we started talking, and I said, uh, so you know, I'm Peggy, and you come here, and she tells me she is from Poland, that she is. A conservator and she's studying art history and a PhD student and uh, so the wheels keep going I think I need to talk to her maybe one or two more times before I ask her if she will <laughs> help with this art display and when I did she was most willing she is uh, amazing and has an amazing eye about where to put everything how to adjust working with the, the, the apparatus that we have so that things were nicely displayed and she kept just saying, we'll fix this, we'll do this, we'll do fix this, we'll do this. And she's been great. So especially thanks to Anya. And um, her buddy, Michael Hager, who came through with, on the last day, <laughs> with printing all sorts of labels and doing all sorts of wonderful work. Thank you very much for that. And then I guess I should thank my husband, Rich, who has been very patient. <laughs> And who I just said, you will be coming over to help set up. You will be doing this. You will be feeding me. You will be doing this. And you'll take care of this. And can you lift this? And would you mind parking here? And would you do this? And would you do that? And he's and he, please set up the, the slideshow and do all this. And he's been great. So thanks to all yeah, these good. people. <laughs> right. So I would like to invite Bill Maley, our town supervisor, and my trail buddy to say a few words. Right now. You know, after all of that, you wouldn't think that Peggy would have forgotten somebody, but we would not be here today without my friend, my trail buddy, the amazing Peggy Dempsey. Thank you so much. Peggy, Peggy has one fault. She admitted this to me once. She's not very good at saying no. <laughs> and boy, she said yes to this in a big way. And, and this just turned out so well. Um, let's go back. Let's thank Leonard Buckland. We're in, of course, the Buckland house here. And as Peggy said, um, we had just before the pandemic hoped to get the Buckland House more open and active for the community. The Buckland House, most of you know this, but in case you don't, this is the oldest standing house structure in Brighton made from Brighton bricks, made from the bricks that were the cornerstone of Brighton's industry in the 19th century. So Mr. Buckland is responsible for this house Thank you, <laughs> councilman. <laughs> and back in uh, about 2004, 2005, the town of Brighton partnered with the Brighton Rotary Club uh, with some financial support from the state of New York to uh, make the restoration of this house possible. And uh, that was a project that really made a great difference in this park, in this community. The history of our town is so much a part of, of what we bring with us every day. And Mary Jo Lanfear, our historian, is so helpful in, in all of that. One of the things I like to say is that trails don't just connect places. Trails connect people. And whether it's my trail buddies, mm -hmm. Peggy Dempsey, Mark Arpeg, and Fran Reed, Four of us didn't know each other at all, period. When the trail, Brickyard Trail opened, 
very shortly after it opened, we were all regulars early morning on the trail along with other folks and the four of us bonded. And we are trail buddies for life. And <laughs> I have learned so much about the trail, nature, life from the three of you. So thank you so much for that. Um, I also want to, uh, Peggy referenced uh, some flickering lights. I do want to thank our Parks Department, uh, led by Matt Beeman, who uh, uh, reached out to me at the very end of the week and said, yeah, yeah we, I guess we do have kind of an electrical problem out there. <laughs> you know, I, I know this will come as a surprise to all of you who love our g and &E, um, <laughs> but yes, there was an electrical problem. But thanks to the park staff, and yes, thanks to some quick response from our g and &E, we were able to, to get the uh, electricity problem fixed, and we're here and warm and, and happy today. Um, I do want to thank our town board members who are here. Um, Chris Warner, who just snuck <laughs> in the back. Um, Grand also, Andrews, Christine sorry. Carrado and Jason DePonzio. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to our town staff that uh, is here, and Adam with his, with his, you know, uh, Adam. I, I, Adam wasn't around then. I could have used your help, Adam, back in '05 when we were painting the ceiling. <laughs> but uh, we really appreciate everything that um, the Parks and Rec Department does. The work of the artists is magnificent. It captures the feel of the trail, and I'm just so glad we could all come together and celebrate. This house, art, the trail, and to the first of what I hope will be many community celebrations here in this building. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thanks.